Your daily choices, decisions, and actions are a result of neuroassociations that you have developed over a lifetime of experience. Neuroassociations are the links between thoughts and emotions in your brain. These links effectively create and shape what you think, how you emotionalize and behave in various situations. Every thought you have is linked to numerous other related thoughts that are associated in some way through common themes or experiences. These links create these associations between the thoughts. Moreover, many of these thoughts are of an emotional nature. Therefore, a single thought can very easily trigger an emotional experience through association, not logic. Here's a good example. If I eat a cookie and allow myself to experience the positive emotions of joy, pleasure, and indulgence of the experience, this puts me in the relaxed branch of my nervous system, the parasympathetic branch. This means that I have all those happy hormones flowing, things like dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin. On top of that, now that cookie has become one more rep of me practicing relaxation and ease around food. The nervous system gets good at whatever it practices, thus creating positive neuroassociations. But on the flip side, if I eat a cookie and I'm feeling guilty because I think it's bad or because I feel like I'm doing something wrong, eliciting any other negative emotions, this puts me in the stressed branch of my nervous system, the sympathetic branch. This means that I have all those stress hormones flowing through me, things like cortisol, adrenaline, and epinephrine. On top of that, now that cookie has become one more rep of me practicing stress and unease around food. The nervous system gets good at whatever it practices and in turn creates negative neuroassociations alongside the cookie. This isn't just the case when it comes to food. Who you're being and how you're feeling before, during, and after any action is what makes the biggest difference. The neuroassociations that come alongside any activity, whether that's eating, moving, thinking, or any doing, are the most impactful. So how can you use this knowledge to increase productivity in your life? First, identify and override current neuroassociations that are keeping you from optimal productivity and well-being. You need to become aware of and then eliminate experiences that are perpetuating those negative neuroassociations in your brain. Become aware of any activity that causes you to force yourself, persuade yourself, or talk yourself into doing things you don't want to do. Elicits feelings of guilt, shame, blame, comparison, or perfectionism alongside it. Physically, mentally, or emotionally puts you in a state of stress or pain. Causes you to belittle, criticize, or negatively judge yourself in the process. Or you are doing because you think you should or because you think you're supposed to. All of these experiences cause your brain to ingrain negative neuroassociations alongside any habit, making future follow-throughs harder and more painful to continue. This sabotages your productivity. Anytime you feel frustrated or annoyed, your brain just sees it as a stress and takes you out of that relaxed state you are trying to create. Creating an experience that your mind, brain, and body enjoy relaxes the nervous system. This induces pleasure, connection, emotional safety, and feelings of love, all of which will fire and wire a positive neuroassociation alongside the activity. When you take something challenging and make it an enjoyable experience, this massively increases your chances to do it again in the future. That's because now your brain isn't resisting it. It wants to do it. When you're making a major decision, if your brain doesn't have a clear signal of what equals pain and what equals pleasure for you, it goes into overload and becomes confused. As a result, you can lose both momentum and the power to take the decisive action that gets you what you want if you fall victim to listening to mixed signals. In other words, when you give your brain mixed messages, you're going to get mixed results. The next time you find yourself struggling to take action, grab a piece of paper and brainstorm all the associations you have to that particular issue, including both positive and negative ones. You can keep this piece of paper just for yourself, but it will help you sort out what's complicating your decision-making process. You may surprise yourself by brainstorming unconscious associations that you didn't even know you had. You'll also want to keep in mind that it's not just the number of factors on each side that creates emotion, but the weight they individually carry. Now that you've emptied all your associations onto paper, decide which ones are valid and which ones are just judgments or misperceptions. Then, decide which ones really matter to you. Once you have all of your associations laid out in black and white and you've let go of mixed messages, you'll find it much easier to move forward with confidence and get the results you're after.